There is today's beer. That is a Vienna lager. Look at that. Ooh, very clear. So, um, this has been in the keg 30 days. You can see, ooh, maybe that's why it's clear. It was pretty clear to begin with, let's be honest. So I should say it's not really a lager. It's not a proper lager. I used California common yeast. And um, it was the first time I'd used it. I actually had it in the freezer for... I don't know, a year and a half, something like that, and never got around to using it. It was out of date. Used it anyway. Very happy with it. So let's watch some of the brewing video, rather than me spoiling it for you. And um, come back to me, and you'll see me drinking this beer. In about three, two, one. It's a brew day today. We're doing a Viennese Common. This is, what is a Viennese Common, you might ask? You might well ask. It's basically a Vienna Lager. Only I don't have any lager yeast, so I'm going to use um, some California common yeast. So that is that is the plan. That's why it's a Viennese common. So I don't know why I called it that, to be honest. Um, so yeah, so not only is it a Vienna lager I'm doing, Vienna common, Vienna whatever the hell, I'm gonna call it a Vienna lager, okay. Not only is it a Vienna lager, it's also the first beer I've done with RO water, with proper RO water. So got all my water, them cows, them bloody cows, got all my water sorted out last night and then for the brew day today, we're actually halfway through the boil at the minute, the weather's been a bit crazy, it's really really sunny and then all of a sudden it's just like, it thunders down with rain basically, and it's been doing that kind of all day, so I haven't really had a chance to sit down and go through this yet. So um. Yeah, so it's a very simple grain bill then. We're talking Vienna malt. There's a bit of wheat in there, and there's a little bit of, little tiny bit of um, melanoidin, and then I think it's chocolate wheat, just to give it a bit of colour. I think I put it, made it a little bit too dark, but um, yeah, that'll not matter. In terms of hops, then we're using a hop called the English term is called emerald, but the real name is. Smagrad, I think it's called. It's a German hop. Um, it's supposed to be like kind of Palatau or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I've never used them before, but I thought I'd give them a crack today. I don't really want anything. I think anything um, tropical and fruity and citrus might. I did. I was tempted to put in a bit of citrus, but I think I might. I'll just. I want to see what the water does. So I'm trying to keep the, um, the hop flavors kind of subtle. Because I really want it. this is RO water, so so yeah. Um, in terms of the pre boiling, we came in a little bit low, we came in at 103. Yet, unfortunately, as is always the way with me, I'm making total fuck up. So, today's fuck up was that when I get it up to strike temp, I normally knock off the heaters until I'm ready to mash in. I don't know why I do that. Because I should really just put it straight onto the mash timer there and then, but for some reason I decided to knock off the heaters and then get mashed in, and then I forgot to put on the the two elements again. So yeah, by the time the, time the mash, I didn't realise until the mash was over, and it was going into the <laughs> going into the mash out, and that's something like 58 degrees or something like that. It's like oh God's sake. So so yeah, I've uh, I put it on basically for another half hour on the mash. And yeah, the recipe was like 104, 1042, 1043, something like that. So it came in at 103, eight, I think it was. So I'm not so hopeful, 103, eight. could be 1037 or below. But no matter. So instead of a 5% beer, I know it'll be closer to 4% or something. But you know what, that's fine. You always have the option of putting in a little bit of something as well. Um. So yeah, and then kind of stuff has been happening all day so it's kind of this is turning into quite a long brew day but I don't really have anything on today and I don't really mind to be honest because well just because so anyway enough of my yakking let's go and do some brewing Um, oh my god, I'm trying 
trying to I'm trying to do this barge. Oh. <laughs> that was a bit of excitement there for five minutes. That's sunny again. It's crazy. Them cows have shut up. Maybe they were almost like a warning about the weather. If they start roaring again, then that's something else is coming in. Cows have started up again, then that's worrying. Okay, it's happened again. The cows were roaring, and then it just opened yeah, again. There must be something to that. Them cows are sacred. That's the end of the brood. 18 litres there is in that. There's supposed to be 20 litres. I'm guessing that 2 litres has gone on those leaf hops. That's the only explanation I have. So, I think it's sitting at about 104.6. There's a the colour as well. It's kind of a, uh, it's going red. It is like a Vienna lager colour, let's be honest. Shouldn't have worried. 104.6. So that'll be around about four and a half percent, something like that. So, um, that's acceptable, isn't it? So, especially after that mess up of the mash. So, there is the yeast. So the yeast is this is a Californian common yeast. This is the Cross May Loof, California common. It's actually, if you see the best before, it's the third of the third month of 2019. So it's out of date. Does that really mean anything with dry yeast? I mean, I thought the dry yeast was instructable, indestructible, that's what I'm kind of going by anyway. We'll soon find out. Um, it's been um, rehydrated. Something's happening. So, let's do it. Yeah, so that is what we've ended up with. As I said before by the clarity, that's pretty good. I think um, it's 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 a little tiny bit more dark than what I would like. It is within kind of within spec, for want of a better word or the correct word. Um, but I think I would just like I would like to drink it uh, to look at it a bit lighter. But you know, the head is fantastic. You can see it there. That's the color of it. Now that's the weight. I always have wheat and I always put it in kind of beers like that because it's, look at the head. I mean, it just comes out amazing. So, um, I can't remember exactly what was in it, 300 grams or something like that of wheat and probably another 50 grams, sorry, 50 grams of the the chocolate wheat. Only 50 grams and look how dark it is because of that. So. On the nose, it's kind of, there's a light kind of aroma of the actual hops in there. A little bit of the malts as well, a little bit of that kind of melanoidin-y type of smell. I can't really describe it. It's like a t toasty kind of malt. But in there as well is like um, the smell of the hops. Um, I used probably more hops than I would have, should have used. Um, but let's get to the taste. Let's get to the taste and we'll talk about it then. The taste is pretty good. I'm very, I'm quite 
I'm not gonna say very pleased, I'm quite pleased with it. It does have its kind of down um, negatives aspects. First thing I have to say is the RO water. This is the first beer I've ever made with RO water and I have to say it is freely it's really paid off. The um whatever it was I paid for that, sixty pounds was it for that filter. That's already paid for itself just with this beer alone. The um it tastes it tastes like a lager, even though it's not a lager, it tastes like a lager. The mouth feel it just feels like soft. You no know, like you would it just feels soft, you know what I mean? Like in a like a proper lager or pilsner. That's what I'm getting at. Now it is clean. It would be a lot more clean if it was a proper lager yeast, I think. But I'm very impressed also with the yeast and the job that it's done. It really there was no issues at all basically with that um with that out of the yeast. It blew through helicopter, it blew through the um fermenting in less than a week, I think it was pretty much. So absolutely no problems. Dried yeast is indestructible. So yeah, I might actually get more of that. I don't think I saved any, I can't remember if I did, maybe I did. But yeah, I think I'll be um, using that again. 16 degrees I was fermenting this at. That's about as low as it said on the pack, I think. But uh, yeah, it was about 16 degrees and it still blew through it in no time at all. The taste is really, really light. It's a little bit of a dry, there's a bit of dryness on it, which is what we want in a lager because that makes it more drinkable. It's 4.6 as well, so it's not crazy, so you can drink a couple of them. Um, as I said before, it's not a perfect beer. I think the, the, the hops, those emerald hops, I'm not going to call them smagrad, the emerald hops, they're quite nice. Now, I mentioned before that um, I wasn't sure how potent they were going to be because these are the ones that Mick gave me. I didn't know how old they were or anything or how they'd been stored or anything, so I thought go more is, le not, you know, it's the opposite of less is more. More is more. Is that the opposite of more? I don't know. Confuse myself there. So, yeah, I thought I'd go more on that. I hadn't used the hops before. And um, they are quite nice. There's, a, it's like a kind of, it's, it's like a little bit of woodiness, an earthy kind of hop. If I had to compare it to something, it would probably be something like Fuggles. Um, maybe not as kind of grassy flavors than you would get from Fuggles, but um, it's something like that, something like that. And with Fuggles, I think it, Fuggles needs to be paired with something else. Usually Goldings is the classic combination. And I think this could do with being having another hop, another bright hop like Goldings or something in there just to lift it a little bit. I'm not saying it's bad, it's definitely not bad, it's really it's quite nice. Um but it just needs that little bit of something to lift, you know, that bit of brightness in there. I mean it's been in the cake for thirty days. My flavours are really coming together now. I mean, it was quite hoppy to begin with. You know what I mean, hoppy. I don't mean, I don't really mean what you're thinking. I mean, like, the taste of the hops was quite prominent. As the time's going on, you're definitely getting more, it's more, it's more all the, the edges are being rounded off and it is becoming a better beer because of it. You get more of the malt coming through as well too. Which is very nice as well. So it's that kind of toasty. It's toasty and it's, you know, the melanoid. I love melanoid malt. I think it really adds something to beers. Um, and mixed with the the um, the Vienna malt, it really comes out. It's come out pretty bloody well. So I have I am intending to do a version two of this, but I am going to switch out the hops to something a bit more new world. That's it. And see what I can get because I'm really I'm happy. I haven't been a hundred percent happy with a beer 
for a long while and I'm not 100% happy with this but this is this is the best beer I've brewed in a while like since before the summer so I can't complain I shouldn't complain rather so yeah um so just to recap them Aura Water amazing job it's done I'm absolutely delighted with how well it's done the yeast, California Common Yeast, really impressed with that as well. The analogers are nice anyway, aren't they? All the time. The smog rod hops, the emerald hops. I now know that I need to pair that with something else. And um, and yeah, and I can now make a beer under five percent and still, you know, it still tastes good. And I think that is to do with the water. I really convinced myself that was to do with the water. So. Yeah, it's good news all around, so, um, yeah, on that positive note, um, yeah, see you next week, cheers. Okay. It's a brew day, so we've got, we're doing a Vienna common let's call it the reason I'm calling it a Vienna common com ignore those cows in the background okay because they've been fucking boring all day and I'm fed up with it every time I switch the camera on they start roaring okay we're having a brew day I'm doing a Viennese common what the hell is a Viennese common there's them cows seriously Arr! every time I open my mouth How's your own farm today? Big one. Big one I was getting raped over there.